Searching for polar bears in northeastern Alaska isn't like looking for a needle in a haystack. It's like looking for a haystack-colored needle in a haystack. We have this incredible terrain of ice that seems to almost go on forever. And somewhere hidden on this ice, on this white reflected snow and ice, is, is a white creature that we need to catch up with. Steve Amstrup, a wildlife biologist with the U.S. Geological Survey, has been doing this for 26 years, trying to learn all he can about what polar bears can tell us about global warming. There's a nice lead here that we might be able to pick up footprints on. His eyes are keenly trained to find what seems impossible. Okay, see the tracks going across there? Okay. Oh, my goodness, look at that. Yeah, see how uh, one big set of tracks and two smaller sets? We got a family group. Yep. However, finding the tracks is only the beginning. Well, they did a 180-degree turn here. Down 12 o'clock, Doc, right off the nose. Our helicopter hugs the ground as we trace the footprints through the snowy expanse over the rubbled ice. Until finally we spot them. Yeah, hey, see the tracks are going along there, up along. And there's a bear right there. Oh, right there. This is what it's all about right here. We have this sow, and she's got some cubs alongside, and now we're going to move in, and you're about to see something absolutely incredible. Boy, good deal. Yep, straight across. Okay, look at this. We're right on them. Amstrup loads the tranquilizer dot into the gun as we circle low over the mother bear to make sure we don't scare her away from her cubs. Then we lift up and she takes off, racing across the ice. Our helicopter lowers down within feet of her. Amstrup, hanging from the side of his window, aims and takes his shot. We're on the heels of a mother polar bear and her two cubs. U.S. Geological Survey scientist Steve Amstrup loads his tranquilizer gun. Our helicopter lowers just over the running sow. Amstrup aims and then fires the dart. You get it? Top of the shoulder. Top of the shoulder. Okay, hey, now let's get the bears back together. So here's the plan. Steve got a beautiful shot. He landed that anesthetic dart right in her shoulder. About a minute ago, we need to give her some time to drop this. Telos all works rather quickly. Of course, we don't want mom and the cubs to separate. So once it's appropriate, we'll get down. We'll actually physically capture these cubs, anesthetize them, and gather data. That data is part of Amstrup's annual field study. He's exploring how a warming planet is impacting the polar bear. And what he's discovered is startling. Armed with a pistol, just in case, Amstrup and I move in to secure the cubs. With the bears safely sedated, Amstrup gets to work. This is the uh, female cub. Polar bears are uh, probably the uh, most important symbol of the Arctic from the standpoint of a measure of the health of the Arctic ecosystem because they're entirely dependent on the surface of the sea ice for catching all of their food. And the food that they eat, the seals and other marine mammals, are entirely dependent on the ecosystem below them. So as the apex or top predator in the ecosystem, polar bears sort of integrate everything that's going on in the ecosystem underneath them. 56 even. 
Amstrup has been studying the polar bear for the past three decades. 370. His data indicates an animal that's changing along with the habitat around it. We're starting to see some changes that may result in uh, future concerns for this population. We've seen declines in the survival of cubs, and we've seen adult males and cubs a little bit smaller in recent years than they used to be. And those are things that would be consistent with a population that might be under nutritional stress. Under nutritional stress because it's simply getting harder for bears to eat. It's an impressive opening in the ice here. This is a lead, and of course, as you can see, we're not alone. A polar bear's primary source of prey are seals. They have the most success hunting seals in the 20 to 50 mile gap of water between coastline and ice. The water is more shallow there and the seals are more plentiful. The problem is though, just like in Greenland, that ice is melting. When the ice melts in the summer, it used to be that it only withdrew from the Alaska coast a little ways, you know, maybe 10, 15 miles, sometimes a little farther than that. But in recent years, we've had a gap of sometimes as much as 200 miles north of the Alaska coast. As a result, biologists are now witnessing some very strange bear behavior. Some of these animals are actually drowning trying to swim these new open waters. Now remember, these are marine mammals, so they're not supposed to drown. There are even cases of polar bears cannibalizing each other when the food runs short. Ultimately, they're all dependent on the sea ice, and if the sea ice continues to decline as it has, it's going to affect polar bears. The sea ice is melting, melting faster than anyone expected. University of Colorado researchers say that in 2007, the Arctic Ocean lost 1 million square miles of sea ice. That's roughly six times the size of the state of California. It is a record rate of decline. Sea ice loss has now surpassed predictions for the year 2050. If the melt continues, Amstrup now thinks two-thirds of the world's polar bears will be gone in 50 years. <laughs>